Hey, what's going on guys? Talk Nerissity here, back for another video. I thought I'd just drop in to, uh, to talk about yesterday's game, whenever you're watching this, the Fulham game, uh, the first game of the season, the 1-1 one, one draw. I said at the end of my matchday experience that I'm going to do one of these videos. It's, I quite like, on a Sunday, after a Saturday game, just sitting down almost as a little week's reflection, just looking back at yesterday's game, seeing what went right, seeing what went wrong. I'm sober now, so I can look at things in a balanced viewpoint because it's all well and good me going like, Yannick Wildschut's going to take us to the Europa League within the next three seasons. Um, but I probably don't mean it because the influence of beer sends me a bit um, even more optimistic than usual. And I went with my mate Will yesterday. Uh, we went drinking with his uni friends. I don't go to university. When you stick a non-student in with students in a pub, you're going to be left behind and it's never going to end well. But it was a very enjoyable day in Fulham. I love Fulham away. Fulham's just one of them clubs that you can't really hate. I just don't think anyone really hates Fulham. It's just quite a nice club on the Thames. The fans are friendly. Um, and it's all just sort of happy clappy, really. But in terms of the actual performance, very impressive from Norwich City. And I think very few fans can moan about that. I'm sure there's a few, but... Um, I don't think much went wrong yesterday. I think there are a few negatives that I want to kind of touch on. But let's go into the game. So I thought we started really well. We had a couple of good chances. I think Marley Watkins should have probably tucked on away early doors. And then we go 1-0 behind. And look, it's it's no one's fault, really. Probably if you want to blame someone, it is Yannick Vulskut. I think he could have been a little bit better um, defending. I think was it up, up against Sessegnon, I think, who had a fantastic game. Um, but he's not a defender at the end of the day, so you can't be too harsh on him, and the ball was whipped across, and it's almost hit the side of Russell Martin's boot. It's a lovely finish from Russ Martin, I must say, into the bottom corner. Angus Gunn can do nothing about it, and I'd probably say we were a little bit unlucky to go behind because we'd, we'd kept the ball nicely, we'd moved it about nicely, we, we stuck to our identity, which was keeping the ball on the floor, and then when we do give it away, the press quite high, and maybe the legs just tired a little bit. Yannick Vulskut and James Husband had very demanding roles when they were playing as wing-backs yesterday, so you can kind of be a bit kind of um, flexible with them, and then we, we settled, and Angus Gunn pulled off a few big saves. I can remember Christoph Zimmerman putting in, in a huge tackle at 1-0, who, by the way, was superb yesterday, Zimmerman. Absolutely fantastic performance from him, considering he's come from the German fourth division over to the second division in England. So it's a big step up for him, but you wouldn't have known. Um, and I just thought the, the, big, the big thing for me yesterday was the fact that I've seen Alex Neal sides, I've seen Neil Adams sides, I've seen Chris Hewitt sides so many times before. When you go 1-0 down away, you either shut up shop and you don't concede another and you just lose the game one or two nil, or you go for it and you just get ripped open on the counter. This Daniel Farker side is, is very tactically aware. It was constantly changing things throughout the game. Not too much, so we completely lost our identity and lost our train of thought, but in a way that just, we, we, we reacted to what was going on on the pitch, but kind of went about our changes in a way that would hopefully then dictate the game. And it worked beautifully well in the second half. First half was, people were settling in, a little bit scrappy had a few chances, but on the whole, fairly good. Second half, on the other hand, thought we bossed the game. It was almost the flip side of the game we played at Craven Cottage last year when we bossed the first half, they bossed the second half. Uh, I think they did hit the post in the second half. Um, they had a couple of good chances, but when you're chasing um, a, a, a goal deficit against a team as good as Fulham, who, by the way, very impressive once again. They, they've certainly kicked off where, the, where they left off, if that's even a saying. Um, they looked very good, especially down the wings. So, so good going forward. Deluco was brilliant once again. I was impressed with him at Carrow Road and Craven Cottage last year. He's brilliant once again yesterday. So I fully expect Fulham to be in the top six this year, which makes it even more impressive that we went to Craven Cottage with pretty much 10 injured players. Four or five of them would probably get into our first team uh, and still manage to pick up a point. And the substitutions changed the game, didn't they? I, I thought bringing on Wares and bringing on Oliveira completely changed it. I would have started Oliveira, I must admit. Not too sure the reasoning behind not starting Oliveira. I guess I'd probably say um, Farker probably just wanted that little bit more work rate that you're going to get out of Cameron Jerome and he delivered everything he could. He didn't have a chance, I don't think, but he worked hard like Cameron Jerome does and he's, he's good value at this level. But you can always guarantee that Oliveira is going to create something or have a good chance. And uh, yesterday he had that chance and he buried it emphatically. A lovely, lovely goal. And I suppose the big question and the big talking point from yesterday is that celebration. I think tons of the neutral fans or people who've just seen the highlights would have looked at that and gone, what, what, you know, what an idiot, what is he doing? But 
the 3,000 traveling fans there, the tens of thousands of people at home, I don't think really care. Oliveira, for me, people are reading way too much into this. And that is, the, that is the world we live in in football nowadays, that everyone just tries to look deep into everything, myself included. But that, there's nothing wrong with that at all. He wanted to start. He'd been started all pre-season. There's been bids coming in for him that we've turned down. So it's obvious that we want to keep him. And then he starts on, starts on the bench for the first game of the season. That is a man who just wants to play football and score goals. He scored the goal in the 89th minute in front of 3,500 Norwich fans to draw a game at Fulham. I would be doing more than just taking my shirt off and pointing at my name in front of the manager. He could have come and punched me square in the face and then trod on me and I would have still loved that man because what he'd done yesterday was absolutely fantastic and he salvaged a point away at Craven Cottage. So Oliveira was brilliant. The pass from Wes was fantastic. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of cameo appearances from him this season where he's going to have real impact. And yeah, I thought we were really, really decent on the whole. Got to pick out a couple of players it was a little bit disappointed with, but at the end of the day, it was the first game. We've had an intensive preseason. I'm not going to dig into any players too much. I wasn't that impressed with Ramchich, I must admit. I think he, he impressed me so much in preseason. That might be why he gave the ball away on a couple of occasions when he probably could have picked a better pass. He had a decent chance in the first half that he'd never really looked like he was going to finish, which he didn't. Um, and I just think he looked a little bit laboured as the game which went on naturally so. And the other one was Marley Watkins, and I think that's probably the obvious one to pick out because he had so many good shots, well, had three really good chances, but them chances only came because of his fantastic movement and his work ethic off the ball is second to none. So despite me not being, not being that impressed with Rancic and Watkins, Look, I can see why they maybe didn't have the best games. Vrancic had a very demanding role, the same as Watkins. Their legs tire. I know what it's like to play five minutes of five-a-side football, be given a one-on-one -on -one and spoon it because my legs are gone already. So I can sympathise with Vrancic and Watkins, um, but I would maybe like to see a little bit more. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I can't be too disappointed with a point away at Craven Cottage. I certainly didn't lose sleep over it anyway. Um, Few other things. I thought Angus Gunn looked fantastic, pulled off a few really good saves. His kick was brilliant. Um, I think we all kind of knew that he was very good with his feet, but he picked out a few long passes that kind of set us on, on the break a couple of times, which was absolutely magnificent. I think that could be a real kind of value that people don't look at this season or maybe don't think of, but his delivery is absolutely fantastic. I think Yannick Wilschgut looked good um, going forwards. And, and the, the best thing about Wilschgut is he'd take on his man, he'd beat his man, and then he would find a, a Norwich player in the box. Or I think all of our chances in the first half came through Yannick Vilchkut. So often we've seen before with Pinto, when Redmond was here, when Murphy was bombing down that right flank last year, you'd beat the first man and then you just wouldn't be able to pick a pass. Vilchkut was very, very calm, very composed when he got in them areas and, and found passes, which is all you really want to see and, and all a winger can do. Yes, the defensive work on their goal could have been better, but he's not a defender. It's the first game of the season. Let the man off. I'm not overly convinced with that three at the back or five at the back, whatever you want to call it, with the three centre-backs and the wing-backs. I thought we looked a bit exposed first half. No fault of husbands or Vilschkutz, but when you've got pretty much every time two wide players coming at you and overlapping, it's always going to be a bit tough. We looked so much better with that back four. I think, the, to be honest, I say I think the criticism of Ross Martin was harsh. I didn't really see many people criticising Ross Martin. That's another point I want to touch on. The fans yesterday were magnificent throughout the whole game. Even when we were 1-0 down, a fantastic rendition of On The Ball City went um, or went straight away, straight after um, they, they scored. And we were just brilliant the whole, the whole time. I didn't hear a moan the whole game. I think actually someone moaned because their pie was cold, which was a dip, bit disappointing because I've rated Craven Cottage's pie so highly. If that's the only moment you're going to get a football game at a Norwich game, then that's not too bad at all. But on the whole, fantastic stuff. Really looking forward now to Tuesday's game against Swindon. That's going to be a nice opportunity to mix and match some players, uh, maybe stick some youth players in there, formation changes. We should really beat Swindon. I don't think a cup run would be beneficial to us this season. It's always nice to win your games and just keep that momentum going. And if all else fails, at least you'll get a Morrison's meal deal before the match, if that's your kind of thing. But... All good, lovely start. Um, I'll take that definitely. Onwards now to Swindon and then Sunderland at home next Sunday, which is going to be another tough game, but you really want to be getting a lot of points from home this season if you want to go up. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, did you go? Did you enjoy it? Did you not go? Did you watch it? 
Let me know your thoughts. If you didn't watch it, what did you do? I hope you've done something good because you missed out an absolute belter if so. Um, hit subscribe, hit like also on this and the match day experience. In my slightly intoxicated state yesterday, I set a like target of a thousand likes on my match day experience. And at last time of looking, I think we were on about 700. So it's definitely possible. It's definitely on the cards. If you haven't yet checked out the match day experiences, uh, the match day experience from the Fulham game, one of my favourite I've ever made. 20 minutes long, big days on my shoulders after 90 minutes in Craven Cottage. Lots of beer, lots of food, lots of fun. And a Nelson Oliveira last minute goal. Lovely stuff. Thanks very much for watching. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you very soon. Peace out. I ain't trying to tell anybody how to live. My only advice is to love and forgive. Everybody born in this world has a gift. The lightning strikes.